Hey friends, welcome to this week's episode of The Higher Self. I've got my friend Dallas Michael Sear here with us this week. He has promised us that this week's show was going to be um, a little bit different and that he's going to be sarcastic, funny, and his <laughs> wonderful, jovial self. So That's right. we'll start with that. Dallas, say hello. Yeah. What's up, y'all? How you doing, folks? Uh, so uh, excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here yeah. as well. And um, excited to go deep because right off the bat, when we started talking, you mentioned the word alignment. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people are out of alignment. Yeah. So we're going to park that for a moment. Okay. But real fast, just tell me some basics about who Dallas Michael Sear is. Yeah. I mean, that's an ever changing question. You know, I, I, I can't count at this point how many interviews I've done over the years. And if I, if I listen to myself say it over and over again, it's like, it's always slightly different because, you know, we're different in every moment. So who I am in this moment, um, is finding greater and greater alignment in my own personal life and diving deeper into being able to see God in everyone and everything. Um, and just being the best possible coach, friend, human that I can be at this time. Um, in my background, you know, I was a financial planner for seven years. But before that, I was a B-boy and a battle MC for 10 years. Get out of here. That's my awesome. life was hip hop. That's awesome. Life, like lived, breathed, grew up in the hood, you know, so. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Hartford. Oh, nice. Hartford, yeah. Okay. Capital of Connecticut. I always say, when I say Connecticut, everyone's like, yeah, you grew up at, yeah. Everyone thinks like Greenwich and Stanford and all that right. shit. It's just beautiful. It, it's there. It exists. Right. Right. But there's also like the Dirty Water, Waterbury, and Gun Wave in New Haven, and Hard Hit New Britain, and the Heartbeat Hartford where I grew up. And in the 90s, it was no joke. Yeah. Like no joke. I got you. So my life was hip hop. I was uh, fortunate to become, you know, get be part of a group that, you know, like a, a, a group called Wasta B-Boys. So we were a B-Boy group. We had DJs, dope graffiti artists. We were, you know, I was always on the microphone at some point. And uh, that was just a great part of my life. But I, I had no direction, no drive, no real direction. And it, that didn't turn out to be at the time because there wasn't like this inherent drive in me to make this the thing. Um, I didn't continue on to be a, you know, an MC or a rapper or, a, you know, a professional break dancer, you know? So it started to like kind of become just a hobby at some point, obviously, you know, and then yeah. as we get older, you know, uh, you start to realize, oh shit, I should make some money or I should grow up. Yeah, right? for sure. You for know? Sure. And so, um, yeah, it's interesting how, how my journey kind of took me into becoming a financial planner, which is what I did for seven years as my first business. Gotcha. Yeah. So I, I you know, right, right off the back, I want to touch on something you said at the very beginning, which was, I've done, you know, hundreds or thousands of these interviews and I'm always changing. Mm. And I wanted to dig a little deeper in that because um, I feel the same. And I feel that I am a different man today than I was even literally 48 hours ago. <laughs> because there's a lesson once you're opened up to the journey of life and you're truly connected with God, there, there is a lesson and a fear that you have to face, an obstacle you have to overcome, a part of your personality that you have to let go of, um, some grief or some anger that you want to release from a person. And mm -hmm. all of these things, they impact our energy, they impact our personality, they yeah, impact sure. who we are, they impact what we do and don't do, mm -hmm. they impact the results that we have in life, they mm -hmm. impact our health, they impact the money that we make or don't make. Mm -hmm. And I bring this up because so many people are stuck being the same person they've always been for yeah. 30 to 40 years. Yeah. And Dallas, they take pride in it. For sure. Right? Yeah. You know, it's like I've been in my job for 40 years and I've yeah. done the same thing. And every Sunday I have my friends over and we watch the football game. Right. And, you know, I say this obviously like, you know, love everybody for where they are in their journey. But sure. I want to dig in a little bit deeper of that. Like what does it mean to you to constantly be on a journey of personal involvement? Yeah. I'm, I, I don't know any other way anymore. Um, there was a time when I was that, that you were, you know, you were speaking of. And, and I, I believe in Western cultures, we become so, especially for men, right? We become so self-identified with what we do and everything is about what we do. And, um, it's easy to either never have a true connection or an understanding of who we be. Mm. And, and, and how important our beingness is and how that should drive our doingness and we have it backwards. And so can, can I, can I 
Please. So, yeah. so, you know, in my early days, there was a, a teacher and an author by the name of Daryl Rutherford. Okay. And he wrote a book called Be, Be the Change, mm. right? And I learned very early on that we definitely do have it backwards, right? right? Mm. Uh, and so many people, we get caught up in what we do, mm -hmm. right? What we do for a living, what we do. Yeah, and we're constantly doing. All, all the time. So <laughs> yeah. that's why nobody has any yeah, peace, yeah, yeah. Right? Right, right? And yet you just brought something, something up that I always talk about, which is like who you choose to be, mm. that's the foundation. Because yeah. when you get that in alignment, that dictates what you do and don't do. 100%. And then that dictates what you have or don't have, yeah. right? So yeah. talk to me a little bit about- Yeah, that'll bring us back to the alignment piece really well. That's but, right. for, but for me, you know, there was a time when I really, I because I didn't have any specific like intention of who I was going to be, you know, we have, we have these, I, th I think we, we celebrate and, and like idolize these people like Tiger Woods, who we see these like videos of him, like putting golf at age three. Right. And then he becomes this golf legend. And, and we think like, that's what it means to know your purpose or to have an identity. And then if we don't have that, it, it, we either we make it that we, 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 we create some version of that for ourselves. And then when we start to get this cognitive dissonance, the static in our lives, it says that this is not who I am anymore, or this is not what I want. That then all of a sudden there's this uncertainty and things start to kind of like the, the, what we appear to have as a foundation under us starts to crumble. Mm -hmm. And because we've made our identity and our character, like that personality we put out front, who and what we are, and we build this, you know, reality around it, then it can be really scary to let that go. Because then who am I? And what does that mean? And how are people going to see me? And then how am I going to continue to make income? And all these questions that we didn't have to deal with, right? Whether they be just simple internal questions or, you know, just basic life questions about how we structure our lives or large ex existential questions, they all of a sudden come flooding in, right? And before we didn't have to deal with any of that and our life was comfortable and easy and I knew who I was and why I'm here. And like I said, in Western cultures, this is really easy. You know, you go to school, you get good grades and you go to college, you pick some profession at an age you shouldn't be making those decisions at usually with no real awareness of who, you, can I swear on this show? You can do whatever you want. No really awareness of who the fuck you are. Right. <laughs> and then you're, but you're picking this major and then just deciding this is your career for life. And then if that isn't your career for life, something's wrong. And that's just, that just doesn't make sense. Mm -mm. That it, it's such an old paradigm that never really worked. It works for a percentage of our culture because everyone's brain is different. That's right. Right? Like there's different kinds of geniuses. We know this now. And so it works for a, per a certain percentage of our culture and population. And it, it kind of makes things look really simple and easy. But overall, at the core, when we start dealing with these soul questions, we find that it, it's not really serving us. And so that's been a big part of my work, like Ignite Purpose, which is technically the umbrella of my coaching, has been about my personal journey where I was a financial planner for seven years and thought that I had all that stuff figured out, you know? And then one day when I'm having a really amazing experience and celebrating this big win that I was striving for, um, yeah, I just... I'm on this balcony and I share this story a lot, but I, I can remember it so clearly, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe because I share a lot, but, <laughs> but to bring context to the, the, the conversation, I'm just like at this point where I'm celebrating, I'm looking at this big five-star resort. I'm excited and it's about to go to dinner and have this big celebration dinner. And then I just, I have this moment of like, yeah, I did it. And then the very next, like f f having this moment of like, of stillness where I'm not doing and rushing and trying to get the next goal. All of a sudden, there's enough space for this voice to come in and say, well, now what? What's next? That's exactly what oh, I thought when you said God. that. I've been a, there, man. Yeah, it was a fucking vacuum. It sucked all the joy out of the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I shit. Know. Yeah, now what? Yeah. There's so much to dive into. You yeah. know, Number one, I, I want to take it back to that, that initial Tiger Woods comment. When, and I, and I bring that up because for so many people, they tend to create a story it within themselves mm -hmm. that they because they're not that yeah right because right. they're not that focused that driven that you know that dedicated that that crazy right. quite frankly yeah, obsessed, that yeah. there's some that obsessed that there's something wrong with them right. and then you know because of the masculine energy that mm -hmm. the world resides under right now at sure. this point in time mm -hmm. 
you know, you have a lot of influencers and teachers that are constantly pushing, like, don't stop, don't rest, get back up, sure. keep grinding, keep pushing, 10x bigger, uh, the, the next watch, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And I sit back w watching and thinking, number one, that used to be me, you know? And number two, thinking no one understands, like, there's no peace in any of that. Mm, yeah. And you're always going to be searching for the next thing. Sure. You know? Yeah. And the second thing that I love about what you said, Dallas, is truly finding what works for you. Yeah. And, I, and I'll bring up two scenarios in my personal life. You know, uh, I'll bring up my brother. I have an incredible brother named Anthony. Okay. Right. And so when he was a young boy, Anthony was really into baseball. And we practiced Dallas every single <laughs> freaking day i don't know if, I, if it was that i was living vicariously through anthony mm. or quite frankly that kid was just that motivated so he forced me to practice with him every right, single right. day so i felt like i put all of my like sports practice energy mm -hmm. into him mm. that by the time my own kids came around i was like man, I just want you guys to chill and like right, whatever yeah, you want to do, it's, it's just have fun and <laughs> yeah. it's all good, you I know? Got you. Okay. And then when my brother became a father, like my little niece is like number nine in the US for golfers at her age. Like she's cool. a stud, right? Right, right? And now he is obviously doing that with them because sure. he is so driven. And for a while there, as a father, I thought to myself, what's wrong with me? Mm. Like, why am I not like that? Right. Like I used to be like that with my brother, but I'm not like that with my own kids. And mm. am I messing up my kid's life? And <laughs> I, I got to snap out of it. I got to sure. go back to that. And I finally, one day I just started to realize like, that's just not the kind of dad I am. Right. I'm a completely different kind of dad, you yeah. know? And Dallas, we do this, we compare ourselves to other people, oh, whether absolutely. it's in the work and in, in our bodies and in our, in our yeah. clothing and in, in our belief systems and the money that we earn in, in yeah. the type of parents that we are. And I believe that once you finally can go deep within yourself and ask yourself, who am I? Yeah. That's where you'll finally have peace. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. It really, the, the the time that I experienced the greatest inner peace, and this it was, it was so interesting in my journey when I had like, you know, I, 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 I've sat with multiple like living avatars and enlightened masters in India and, and I've done all the plants. You know, I want to hear the India stuff. Yeah, I've yeah. gone to India multiple times. I've done all the all the plant medicines and all this, all the stuff, you know, yeah. that a lot of the spiritual communities and, and, um, personal development and, and growth communities are centered around. And, and it's been amazing. I mean, it's absolutely has made me more flexible, more, more self-aware, more, um, yeah, just more present, more just, yeah. I'm just more, uh, all the things you more, know? you bro, more me. Yeah. Um, and, what I recognized was that the one of the times when I was the most authentic and joyful was when I was 18. <laughs> when I even before that, when I was like 16 years old, and I was I was doing everything that I loved, which was as I mentioned earlier, was like centered around hip hop. But I was like really unique in the way that I spoke, unique in the way that I dressed. I did what I wanted when I wanted. Now I had that freedom because my parents were separated. And so my mom, you know, she's a recovering addict and she was never really like the, the more stern parent, right? She's really relaxed parent. She, both my parents are kind of more interested in being like my friend because they were so young when they had me than they were parenting me. Yeah. And my dad wasn't there, you know, physically. And my mom was just like, I just, just don't kill anybody and go to jail if you can, please. And I was like, okay, I can, I can, yeah, <laughs> I can do that. I can do that. Yeah, I cannot get that. caught. Yeah. Can, yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. But, so, um, so yeah, uh, I had all this freedom and, I was very fortunate to be in a place in, in a place in my life where everyone was like real creative and it was fun and it was, you know, so it was interesting to, to have, to go through all this spiritual work and personal development and healing. And then to find out like at around like the age of like 35, 40, I look back and I'm like, shit, I had a lot of things figured out young that I wasn't even aware of that I get to bring back into my life. And that's where integration really comes in. Yeah. Right. The integration of my light and my dark, my masculine, my feminine, my, you know, all the things that I've done that I deemed as failures at one point, which I know better now, but I had deemed them as, as not successes and all the things that were successes have all fully integrated now at this place where I have peace and such peace that whether I, 
uh, succeed in the spot in, in, in sight of someone else's eyes or not, or whether someone likes me for, for, you know, for the way that I'm being, or they're not comfortable. I don't give a fuck. Oh my God. The level of like unfuck with ability, you know, that word unfuck with Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. just off the charts. Yeah. yeah I and love that, that's man. what inner peace is to that's me. What, that is what true inner peace is. And that's what true spirituality is. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't so. matter. It's like, it doesn't matter if you wear the garments. It right. doesn't matter if you have all the, 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 the beads and right, the, right. and the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like totally. it doesn't matter if you're hugging a tree. It yeah. It's like, we, we tend to do this in where we make everything mean something and we deep everything. Sure. Right. If you are spiritual, that means that you are like this, like this, like this. If you follow religion and you're a Catholic, that means yeah. that the only way that you can be spiritual, if you wear the white thing around the collar and yeah. so forth and so on. And, you know, and what I have found in my journey, and I was an altar boy. Okay. I was a Christian. Mm -hmm, I too. baptized people. I did it all. Right. I, I led altar calls. I did all of it. Okay. And you know what I found true spirituality <laughs> really is? is finding and discovering myself, mm -hmm. finding and discovering God within me, within you, within everyone else, yeah, sure. and being truly at peace with who I am mm -hmm. and how unique I am yeah. in this world, you know? Amen. And that's part of my mission and my purpose because yeah, I feel like when too. people find that, right? Yeah. It's like you're unstoppable yeah. and you're unfuckwithable. That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. I, I, I share very similar, same philosophy. Um, I've been listening to a lot of like, um, Neville Goddard and Alan Watts lately. And both of them, like one of them is a Christian mystic from like the twenties and forties. The other one is, is a philosopher. Yeah. From, you know, everyone knows Alan Watts. Alan, but he's, yeah. dope. he's dope. Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> Neville is dope also, man. So, but they, they both come, come at God in a very similar way. More of what you were saying, like mm -hmm. to me, God is, you know, like the statement I am, it's like, the, it's, it is everything. You know, the mics we're talking into, you, me, it's just everything That's is. That's right. That's right. And um, having that awareness to me is allows God to be ever changing and in a paradox where I can never actually experience all of what God is or creation, it, creation consciousness energy is. Um, it allows me to let go of the need to, and I can just be with the God that's here right now. That's right. Right. That's right. Versus I found, cause I also had a similar journey with different religious philosophies and, and, and I was a Christian for years. I grew up Catholic. All it's very similar. Um, and I, and to me, I felt like the way that God was filtered through those experiences was very limiting, very limited, you know, like it's got to have this one belief in these specific practices and this one person. And you went, and you had to go to this one place and you had to listen to somebody else. Yeah. And it was always one man. Yeah. Like it, it boggles my mind, you know, that we are still wrapped up around that concept. Yeah. That it's a man when we're born from a man and, and a, woman, a right? woman. Yeah. And we have a masculine side to us and a feminine side to us. Now for men, we are taught to not own that part of us, yeah, not right? Usually, yeah, because that makes us another label that makes us gay, or that sure. makes us, you know, obviously it's not, but sure. you know, we are caught up in this limited how do I say that in this limited view of what God is mm -hmm. because it's comfortable for us, yeah. Because if we could put God in a box, then guess what else we can put in a box? ourselves yeah was, and yeah, if we're in that else. box that's we right. are nice and safe that's right yeah. and when we're in that box we don't have to ask questions because as long as it's in that box that box is what's true yeah and real life starts the moment you dare to ask questions about that box yeah. why the box is even there and who in the world put it there in the first place yeah yeah 100 percent. love that yeah and and i love that and also just being okay with not having the answer Th that's not okay. knowing right. the answer that's it that's it right absolutely it's like it's like what i find with many people is like this thing gives me the i can now i can rest it's like their brain can rest but if we weren't so self-obsessed with the brain and and allowing thinking to drive the show um, one thing that I share a lot with clients is that like, we've got three brains and we use them in an incorrect order. You know, like we have the gut brain, we have the heart and we have the mind. And if you think about that, they're, they're literally in the creation of the womb, they're, they're 
born in reverse. It's the gut. Mm -hmm. And then it's the heart that starts beating and then the brain. And so if we were to use it in that order, right? Like our intuitive nervous system. That's right. And, and really feel through the world and then tune into our emotional base and feel our heart and then get up to the mind. Oh my God. That takes us, that, that is alignment. The, the, the game is, it's, that's it. it's over. That's it's it. Just, yeah. That's it. And it doesn't yeah. mean you won't have some bumps and, you know, so, some bumps along the way. Um, one of the foundational things that I teach in Ignite Purpose is that your challenges are your greatest gifts. Like for me, everyone's like, you know, I succeeded in spite of my challenges. I'm like, well, if you didn't have the challenge, you wouldn't have succeeded. You succeeded because of the challenge. <laughs> like that's the whole fucking reason why you're here is to go through that experience and to evolve you to be more of your true and higher self and to bring you closer to unconditional love. And and then, and that's when you get to see the challenge as a gift. 100%. Dallas, you know, and I know you know this, you know, and the work that we do, I mean, I've been in some ceremonies, whether it's been mushrooms or ayahuasca, I've been in some ceremonies where, you know, I remember one in particular, and this, if this young lady is listening, she knows exactly who she is. It gets me emotional thinking about mm. it. I'm in New York, and I was leading a group of about 15 or 20 through a mushroom ceremony. And, you know, at the end, there's that very special moment when they like take off the blindfold and their eyes are tearing up and they look at you and you smile and they smile. And it's this look of like, I get it. Right. Like, yeah. I finally yeah, get it. That, that moment for me, that moment, priceless. Right. Priceless, that yeah. moment, right? Because it's mm -hmm. seeing a human being be reborn, mm -hmm. be reborn into the reality of who they are. Mm -hmm. Well, this particular woman at the end when we were integrating, she says, you know what? She says, and I know this is a delicate subject, but I feel led to just share it. She says, you know, I was sexually abused, you know, by someone that I confided in when I was a young girl, mm -hmm. which this is a big issue for a lot of women. Oh my you know? God. Yeah, it's millions like, and millions. in all the work that men I too. do, men too. this men too, yeah. this is this is a big topic, right? And she says, and today was the first time, and she said it with a smile on her face, she said, I let it go. Mm -hmm. And not only did I let it go, I forgave him. Mm -hmm. And not only did I forgive him, I knew why he did it. I understand the pain he was living in. Yeah. And so my heart sent him love and now I'm free. Bro, I I started crying in that moment because yeah. it was like, that is it. That You're is no it. longer a prisoner. That's You're it. free. Victim done. Yeah. And I believe that's a big part of what we're waking up to in the world. Like on a society level, man, we're we're going through this experience of radical responsibility and leaving behind victimhood forever. Forever. And um I, and interestingly enough, like when you look out at the world, it looks like a time when we're experiencing a lot of that, ironically. And I think it's because it's pushing us towards the point of being able to evolve and grow beyond that. You know, it's like, it's basically, we're now in the root chakra of the planet, awakening up these like base things of our safety, our sovereignty, financial security, all being shaken up so that we can have these challenges, which are absolutely gifts. And I believe on a soul level that we are co we co-created for a very specific reason. For sure. And so, yeah, like that when you can learn to say thank you at that level, you know, to even the people who we deemed have harmed, harmed. us and, and done us wrong. Who the fr um, I, I get I, same same with you. I, I know, bro. I, I just yeah yeah yeah. yeah. It's incredible. So yeah, yeah that's I, I'm glad that you're also here doing that work. So so I want to hear from you. What is alignment? Um, it's this moment. You know, it's being present in this moment, and present meaning like truly self aware. And I like to use the term omni awareness, like to the best of your ability. Can I be present of, you know, all the things that are happening in the background of this interview right now, as well as fully present with you, present to my own internal feelings and what's going on emotionally, and also discerning enough to know what is emotional and what is like a feeling of the moment and what is true beneath that, right? Because sometimes we can get driven by our feelings that are, that actually are, uh, their reactions from past trauma and they're not actually telling us you know what we what we should do right like we get this places in like um fear and and uh confusion and doubt and we think it's telling me oh this is it's not the right time right but really it's telling you no be present to what's going happening right now 
clear that shit right. and fucking move through it is what it's actually right. telling you, right? right? But we're like, no, this is, it's, I, I can feel it's not the right time, you know, especially in the spiritual communities, right? So, um, so I think alignment is being able to do that, to be able to truly tune into the present moment and feel what is true and real for you in that moment. And what is, you know, what does it look like for a human being to have found alignment within themselves? Mm -hmm. Whether that be, you know, let's 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 go one one by one yeah. financially. Yeah, it's not perfect. Uh, this is the other thing I think people get confused with. You know, financially, it means for me that like your uh, again, be your present to how best you get to create value in the world, mm -hmm. right? And you're doing it with joy even if there's some rough days or some aspects that, you know, that you get to move and work through overall, you're really clear about the value that you're presenting and having a, a really enjoyable exchange for that value. So it's energetic so or financial. Yeah. It's so, yeah. it's so interesting. You brought that up because that was my post today. Was it? Okay. Yeah, my my yeah. post today was you have a unique gift mm -hmm. and your offering of that gift to the world is the value that you present to mm -hmm. the world. And sure. then there's an energy exchange for that, yeah. you know? And the other thing that I really love about our conversation is before we got started, you said like, I love like one on one with someone for sure for like a year, like really going deep with them. Yeah. And I found out that I don't really like the stage or I can yeah. do it, but it's not where I'm like best served. Yeah. And it's like, do you know what I thought? I was like, that's not where I'm best served. Right. Like I'm best served, like, you know, on, on the stage. Like sure. that's what I love. It drives me, it drives me nuts. Like I just love making that impact. And one on one sometimes I find myself feeling a little bit limited, mm -hmm. you know? Got it. And the beautiful thing is like, that's your power and that's you being in alignment. And this mm -hmm. is my power and me being in alignment. And, you know, to all of the listeners, there is no right or wrong. No. And you you can let that change. Like there was a time when and it, maybe it was where I was in my level of mastery or just where I was in my life, right? Like I'm 45 now. Mm -hmm. So there was a time in my life where all I, all I did was on stage being a battle MC. I was, I was either, a, you know, in the middle of a circle on a microphone or, you know, battling another B-boy all the time and it's all i wanted to do was to perform and to be seen and then when i became like a coach and i started speaking that's what that's all i wanted to do was be the next brian tracy or les brown or tony robbins yeah that was it yeah. and that's what that was like my driving focus was to was to do that and i still enjoy that very much and get lit up i just noticed along the journey that it didn't it didn't fulfill all of you what i wanted yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and and it wasn't like where i felt i was doing the most work the deep work for other people it's exactly that like yeah. you like you like you were just saying so i think that's the that's the, the the funny part about alignment this is why i love like gene keys and human design and enneagrams i love all that stuff and i love pulling it out in my work so people can see their like their true individual it unique. tells you yeah absolutely yeah we think we don't have a roadmap we have got a roadmap oh for sure yeah there's roadmaps so i love that it, it can really point to it, it's not to put you in a box and say that, that this is who you are you're limited by that. But if you want to swim with the stream, here's some things you might want to know about yourself that make you unique and special. And you can bring those through whether you're in line at a grocery store or whether you're doing your vocation and work. Cause I don't believe our purpose is like our, our work. Yeah, I believe my purpose is the essence of what I get to bring through of God trying to express itself as me. And through you. And through me. That's it. Yeah. If if that if if that's happening, then it doesn't matter what I'm doing, going back to the doing and being thing, right? It doesn't matter what I'm doing. But it does make it easier when I bring that essence through in my work. And for me, yeah, it's usually like smaller groups, um, you know, like 10, 20 people in a mastermind, or it's like me one-on-one -on -one going deep in a, in a long session with a client. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, but if I don't balance that occasionally with being in, on interviews or being on stages or doing larger retreats, I don't feel fulfilled either. I got you. So I kind of got to have a little bit of both. It's just, I like more of one than the other. And I just encourage everyone, right? To start to figure out, okay, what is truly in alignment for me and be honest about it. And yeah, it, may, it might surprise you. Yeah. You know, you might really want to, drive a ups truck i don't know you never know right you never know i said i love the movie you ever seen the movie american beauty 
with Kevin Spacey. It's an old school movie, but essentially like, you know, he's got this job and he just wakes up to how much he hates it and decides to quit and start flipping burgers. I have. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. And, and he's going through a midlife crisis, but he's like, for that moment, he's just genuinely happy with just the simplicity of his life and going back to something that he enjoyed doing like as a teenager, just flipping burgers. Flipping burgers. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Talk to me about something. And don't you find, because I feel like prior to awakening, you know, and, and, and I like to consider awakening as whether it's that first deep meditation, whether it's that first ayahuasca ceremony or mushroom ceremony, whether it's that first breath work, or, you know, for some people I've heard, whether it's that first moment where you're just sitting there and, and, and it's like source opens you up, you know, everybody's different, everybody's different. But for me, prior to awakening, it's like the doing was the thing, mm -hmm. you know, as much as I told myself, be, do, have, right, right. and as much as Brother, I was a coach. I was right. I was on stage giving seminars talking about be, do, have, and you got to be. No, <laughs> it was the doing. Right. <laughs> it was the doing. That was the thing. And then once I started to awaken, it's like not only that I step into the being and truly being myself, right? Mm -hmm. Like my T-shirt wearing, no custom suit right, self. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that I find true happiness. Yeah. You know? The only thing is that when you start truly being yourself, you start to ask yourself really tough questions. Yeah. Really tough questions. And I think this is why people are afraid to get out of that box. Like, mm -hmm. you know, many people know for me, one of the toughest questions was, am I happy in this relationship? Mm. And I, I knew the answer before I even asked the question. Right, right. The answer was, no, you never have been, yeah. you know? But then what are you gonna do about it type of deal, right? The reason why I bring this up is, for the following, don't you find that when you're in your being and you're being your essence, that everything flows? Much easier for Much sure. Much easier for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, we're constantly co-creating, you know? So um, there's absolutely aspects of this life that are going to unfold outside of me and outside of my control. And that's one of my favorite things about being in alignment is I don't have the desire or need to control things as much or to pretend to control. Because we never truly control things. We might be in a relationship where we're thinking that we're controlling the relationship through our uh, jealousy or even how much we're loving and doting on another person. But how that person responds to us is never actually in our control. And the same with everything except for our own thoughts and emotions and decisions. Yeah. The only things that are ever in our control. And so I just found, like, like you were saying, I found a, a lot more joy and peace and things flowed easy. There was like a, this natural rhythm and synchronicity of life that I fell into or remembered and awoke into because I was not trying to control everything anymore and just tuning into what the real alignment was. Like who, who, who am I being in this moment? Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. We brought this up a couple of times. Talk to me about relationships. Man. Yeah. What about them? That's a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun one. Yeah. Relationships are interesting. Um, I feel like they're one of the most important aspects, if not the most important aspect of life. Um, and I've had some amazing relationships. I, I've, I've, I started out when I was younger dating women that I felt like I needed to fix and save. I had a, I've been there. Were, yeah. I, oh yeah. 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 Okay. I was, yep. Yeah. Knight in shining armor. Mine were always. Like a knight in shining yeah, armor. Absolutely. Mine were always single moms. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had to save the single mom. Yeah. Yeah. Save it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, yeah. And so, so I dated some women that were going through, <laughs> going through some amazing, interesting, challenging things in life. Yeah. Um, and I came and I, I can say, you know, honestly, I felt like I, I was a, a, a stable person in their life. And that is a good thing, obviously, but to be in a relationship with like, because of that, right. Like trying to fix somebody or, or, you know, feel better about yourself because of how, you know, good you are to this person who's going through so much, you know, um, is, is a funny thing. And then I, I, when I kind of realized that that wasn't serving me and it wasn't what I wanted, I wanted a woman who was like strong and independent. And then I started attracting very strong, independent women who couldn't actually soften and receive me in a relationship. 
They were they're masculine. That's it. Yeah. And and so they, it kind of screwed up the pop polarity and they were unconscious of emasculating me or I was unconscious of allowing myself to 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 step into that and not really lead and be in my power. Right. And and it wasn't until I became aware of both of those swings that I had made in my relationships that I really attracted like strong and conscious aware women who could soften and be in their feminine. And I've just been really enjoying the relationships of men of like my brothers in the last few years and not really like dating. I've I haven't really so this is interesting that you actually asked this question because I personally haven't like gone on more than 3 or 4 dates total in the last 3 years. Hmm. I've been like the term celibate doesn't even make sense to me personally because I'm not like choosing not to have sex. I'm just like if someone comes along and I feel like that is my partner, like, I don't know if there are any more, I used to think, I used to like really hang up on the, on the idea of twins, twin flames and soulmates and all that. And I'm not attached to those terms anymore. I really don't care if there are twin flames and, and soulmates and how we experience that as much as I have a sense, I have an internal knowing of when someone comes along and I'm like, this is someone that I am, I get to and am meant to have a deep, meaningful relationship with. And I probably am supposed to. Right. And if that, and if, and I'll go as far as, I don't use that word very often, but I, it, it, maybe I'm supposed to. And so until I really sense that and have a feeling, I don't even bother. It's so funny you bring that up. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Because I'm happy with the relationship with me, by that's, the way. That's it. That's it. I, I'm so busy dating me and being with God and just all the people that show up in my life. That's it, Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that for people who are not awakened, especially men, to hear that, it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Bro? yeah. And I have you a know? sexual drive, man. I still. Oh, yeah. Everybody. I, yeah. yeah. I can yeah. like, it's, it's not about that. It's not that, I, it's not that I'm missing or lacking that. It's just. I'm so good. You know, right I, I feel like I have to share because okay. this is a, this is a part of my life that is kind of yeah, you know please. coming up right now. But you know, number one, when you do awaken and you do do the work, you're going to start to find out very quickly that the amount of people, right, the pool of proper energetic matches to your energy starts to really shrink. Mm. It really does start yeah. to shrink, especially when you are very cerebral, like I believe you and I are. I can't like, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> a, a woman could do something and I go, oh, it's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> because you did that because of that and because of that story. And then that happened when you were a little yeah. girl. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, boy. Yeah. I, I, I mean, like I'm here. I'll be your friend, but yeah. eh, it's not going to work, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, there were many times where I was dating that it's like, you know, I'd open a door or I'd meet somebody or whatever. And then within 30 seconds, it's like, oh, yeah, that's not this. Yeah. That, and that's, that's, that's it. You nailed it. Yeah. I go on a date and if it doesn't feel it's like. It's fast. Yeah. It's instant. Yeah. I won't go it's, on a second date. Yeah. I don't need to. Yeah. And when I finally found, you know, my, my, my partner, you know. It, like nobody actually knows about this. It's not like official. Yet. Cool. It's not Instagram it's official. It's just between yet. you and I. It's just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and the microphones, right? right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, it was because I went through that journey of, you know, being happy with being by myself. For sure. You know, and, and I went through that journey of being celibate. I remember um, I was laying there on that couch, just taking a nap. And God says, yeah, buddy, it's time for you to be celibate. And I was like, no. No, I don't want to do that. Like, right. No, why do I have to do that? Like, yeah, it's, it's it's part of the plan. So yeah. you're going to do it or not? Yeah. It's like, oh, all right, fine. You know, and I at the very end, it was interesting, but at the very end, I had taken a trip and I had gotten my heart broken mm. to the point where I was like, I'm done. Mm. I'm done with all of this. For like, sure. this is dumb. Like, <laughs> I, I thought I knew what I was doing and I'm done. Like, yeah. I don't care anymore. <laughs> When I finally let go. So you want spiritual growth, man? Yeah, that's it. Like a that's relationship. It. Absolutely. Yeah. When I finally let go, <clears throat> that's when she appeared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when she Amen. appeared. Yeah. That's so, it. Yeah. That's when my, my former beloved, who I was with for almost three years, um, you know, I was involved with her children, beautiful kids. And I believe her and I had such uh, an amazing journey together. And we did a lot of healing together. We had a lot of fun together. Um, I definitely experienced some of my greatest uh, challenges, but also greatest growth with her. Mm. We remain like she's still one of my closest beloved soul humans 
in the world. I adore this woman. We're probably in some ways closer than we were before when yeah. we were together. Yeah. And so that transition, like to be able to go through all that we went through and, and to call in my first real, like strong, intelligent, conscious, loving woman who was learning at the time how to soften and be in her feminine. So we, we did, we were able to experience some dance and polarity with that. Um, but then also to like have these challenges where we were very clear, like at least for right now, we get to say goodbye to the romantic aspect of our life. And then the transition through that in a very loving way. I mean, all of that was such a, a, an amazing like healing experience from start to finish you know and whenever her and i share about our relationship and people hear how we navigated that and you know like what we went through and then how happy and you know close we are now they they love that and i feel like that's what true relationship is like true love it, it true love it's will always lead to more freedom that's right bro. that's right that's right you know like I, ha I don't have to control the person i don't have to have a certain version of them in my head forever i can let them grow and change they can let me grow and change and that goes back to like you know not being so attached to our identities you know it's a beautiful thing when when uh, I started to, to transform from being a financial planner and I had no idea what I was going to do next with the rest of my life. And I went to a really dark place because I was so attached to that being who I was. That's right. And so when I was able to start to, you know, be flexible in my identity and to allow myself to be different in each moment and not to worry about what others thought of me, um, the people and also the experiences that just presented themselves were so much lighter because of there was no expectation there because the, there was so much greater freedom there. And that's what, that's love. That's love. If you're loving yourself, if you're loving your work, if you're loving another person, you that's know, it. that's it. There's that freedom, that spaciousness. It's it's so interesting because I, I recently made a post on Instagram. I, 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 I walked into, you'll understand this. Um, I'll share part of the story. I walked into a jewelry store with her. We were in Switzerland. Oh, okay. I was at the end of a two week trip. That was, I, I had never, number one, I get tired of people real fast, <laughs> like really, really <laughs> fast, you know? So to spend two weeks with someone and not only not get tired of them, but to feel like, no, this is, mm -hmm. I'm, this is like a part of my life now, you know? It was, it was magic when it was powerful. And so we walk into this jewelry store in Switzerland and it's like the most beautiful jewelry I had ever seen. Right. Like I know good stuff. Right. I've got an eye for good <laughs> stuff, you know? And we see this ring and we see this ring and it was an aquamarine blue uh, stone and we try it on and whatever. And, you know, we put it back and, I, in that moment, man, I'm feeling so much is going on inside of me to the point that I start having visions. Mm. Like I see like a room full of jewelry. Mm. And like, if I have like, I am placing jewelry, I'm adorning her with jewelry, right? right. right? And I'm like, <laughs> I've never been this kind of guy, you know? So we leave the store and she's kind of feeling the same way. Mm. And we're both like quiet, you know? <laughs> and she goes, did you feel that? And I go, what do you mean did I feel? I'm still feeling it. Right, did you right. feel it? She goes, yeah. And I was like, what was that? Anyhow, make a long story short, the story's on Instagram. But mm -hmm. when I spoke to my psychic, Jesse, he, he says to me, in that moment, what you guys did was that that store was a time portal. Mm. And you bridged, you know, because you know, this time is linear and circular, mm -hmm. right? He said, you bridged the past, you bridged the future. Mm. And all time, basically, and all of your lifetimes that you spent together mm -hmm. is now in that ring. Wow. It was so beautiful and so powerful. That's cool. And then I go, what did I see? He goes, it, she was once your queen mm -hmm. when you used to live in Rome. That's why you came on this trip to Italy. And it's like, mm -hmm. I know I'm going to a place where the listeners are probably like, what the hell sure. are you talking That's about? Right. But when you do the Come work, the ride, yeah, when you, you, <laughs> when you do the work and you open yourself up to totally. source and to spirit and to life, to God, you start to realize you truly are a spiritual being. Yeah, You've 100%. been here before, 100%. you know, and, and, and you're, you're, or that you're, so, and it's, it's tricky about the past life thing. Cause I'm with you fully, fully, fully. Yeah. Um, and, the idea that all of infinity is happening at one point in time and that there is only the present moment and that time just continues to collapse on itself and it's not circ it's not linear it's both linear and circular um all if you if the paradox is is one tr it, like pretending we even understand what the fuck we're saying yeah right like literally re, re, like we get it and yeah. and i'm humble enough to know 
that on some level, that's words I just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then I'm still growing into an understanding and it'll probably happen after I leave this human form. For sure. And with, the, with that idea in mind, every version of me that has ever and will ever existed exists in this moment. So is it a past life, right? Yeah. Or is it the fact that that, version of me also exists at this moment is playing out currently for and sure. in tapping into it. For sure. It's both and in my experience so far, because I've, I've seen so many different philosophies that share, they kind of come together in a, a similar way, you know, like where they meet. I'm like, oh, when, when two very profound, you know, multi-thousand year philosophies kind of meet at a point, I'm like, that's probably the closest that we're going to get at this point anyway. Um, it's, you know, it's probably some, you know, some, uh, juxtaposition of the of the two together i'm sharing this because um when i was with my partner similar thing there would be a, there was a moment when her and i are having a fight and she's hurting really really bad and and a lot of men will do this in a relationship with their partner they're like you know especially when their woman is like oh they're so women are so emotional and she's freaking out and like what's the big deal you don't want to ever do that with a woman right you want to be very respectful and honoring of whatever they're experiencing even if to you it's not a big deal and with that being said context given she's on the floor and i'm just standing over her talking to her because she's like really in pain and really sad like hurt, 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 like hurt. Like I just cheated on her and murdered her mother at the same time. And I'm like, this is something is off here. It's this really isn't that big of a deal. What the fuck is happening? This is a very strong, intelligent, like one of the top coaches in the world. What is going on? I'm not, I'm not hurting you, but it was like, I was standing over her and killing her. So bringing this to full to, circle. Yeah. Is because, uh, we also, I actually, I work with Jesse also, by the way, that's funny. I love him. Um, but not to get too sidetracked. Um, we were working with someone else at, at, at the time, our friends, Sandra and Daniel, and they, they shared with us how we had multiple lives. One of them where I was this big, like real kind of like deformed ogre. And I was in love with her and I kidnapped her so I could have her because I knew she wouldn't want me in any other way. It was kind of wow. like this Beauty and the Beast scenario. And then another time when we were both e Egyptian emperor and empresses, but of different places, and we wanted to merge our kingdoms, but because of our families, it was kind of this Romeo and Juliet thing. We couldn't. We couldn't. What we had to do was we one of us had to kill the other, even though we were actually in love with one another. And so because we had either, you know, kidnapped and, and <laughs> raped and, and tortured or, or because ogre. we had, yeah, or because we had murdered each other for each other's kingdoms over and over again, these traumas she were playing, she came up. That, that's wow. the level of what she was experiencing. Powerful. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful. So it, it is interesting when you go into deeper conscious relationships to one, to even have this level of conversation. Oh, it's like, come on, how many yeah, yeah. people can we actually you can't, ha you can't. go there with, right? Right. <laughs> and, then, and then what I noticed is, is like the beautiful thing is, is like a lot of the the heavy work, the heavy lifting you do in the early stages of the relationship, the honeymoon phase comes like after mm. because you, you want so badly to be open and raw and vulnerable and authentic. And we get to balance that with still being relatable and in a relationship. Right. Right. And still being playful and light and having love and good sex and pleasure while still being able to go deep. Right. And that was a challenge that for, for me, that's where we had the, for my, this past relationship I've talking about where we had the most difficult. So I caution everybody, if you're hearing this and you're, you're all about having those deep, vulnerable, conscious, amazing relationships, they, no, 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 they get ready. Those yeah, are the, those are the toughest ones. They'll bring up the most trauma. Oh, the and biggest, you've yeah. got to, you've, you get to find ways to make it light, easy, fun, playful, and continue to relate and have a relationship right. and not just something that you're working on because you'll end up finding yourselves. You'll think it's your twin flame and you're just two people who are tra trauma bonded together. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's a very different that. thing. Yeah. I get that. I get that. Yeah. So um, before we wrap up, I want to hear sure. something here. You've mentioned the plant medicine and like, Practically everybody I'm going to have on the show has, has <laughs> no, gone past medicine, so I'm going to I'm going to park sure. that one. That's fine. But what you did bring up that is new is your experiences in India. Yeah, greatest experience, greatest story. What was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was funny enough. This former partner I was with, she she was there at the time. Um, there's a there's a person. We'll just say person. Uh, it's um, 
Man, it's really hard to explain these things in human terms, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I'm somebody who believes in the ability of a uh, of a living avatar. And what that means is a uh, a spiritual being like Metatron or Isis or you know, yeah. or even Jesus choosing to come back to the planet um, and, and, and and take over the human form like it, through an agreement with a with you, let's say, um, like the goddess of, of Ganesh or Lakshmi or some god or goddess decides to come back. And to bring harmony and balance back to the planet. And you become the avatar for that being. And so you're not enlightened. You were never asleep to begin with. You come in li literally as a living deity. Knowing, knowing this. And uh, on a soul level asking that soul like I'm going to come in now. And the soul is like okay cool. And then you come in and you're now that deity. So for the level of whoever's listening to understand or a, run, bunch of people. a bunch of people, that's okay. Just know that I believe that this is a possibility that deities can come back to the, to the planet in this way, or at the very least, a person can become fully enlightened for in, sure. in their human experience. For sure. So even if it's just that, even if it's just they're fully awakened, either, or this person is some version of that. This their person in India. Yeah. Their Got name it. is Sri Shakti Ama. It's not the hugging ama that a lot of people know about. The hugging ama, um, also an enlightened being, saint. She's been she's known to have hugged like millions of people. Her hugs are healing. I've met her. She's amazing. Also, I've sat with a few enlightened masters. Sai Mama, uh, ama. This other ama. Uh, uh, my first teacher was um, uh, uh, Baba Hari Das, who has also passed on now in physical form. So point is we went to go see this this human deity um, named Sri Shakti Ama in India. It was a retreat that my friend Brahman Kerry, who has been a follower of Ama for like decades, she took she takes people to um, Pedam, which is the name of this like kind of town and city that's been built around this person. Mm. And so this person uh, became awakened and enlightened around the age of 14. Right, this is when this deity decided to inhabit his body, mm -hmm. and this deity is a, a woman. Now, in a society where it's still very patriarchal in India, uh, it's interesting that a fem a female deity would come back, but into a man's form. Right, it's actually the it's actually uh, the the whole intention of rebalancing the feminine energy of the planet. Mm. That a, f a, f a female deity would inhabit a masculine form so that the, the perfection and beauty of both could walk on the earth, especially in a, uh, a society or a culture that's very masculine dominated still. So um, I got to sit with this being. And at first, uh, you're, I'm in this the temple. There's a lot of temples. This whole, there's literally a whole city. He, he's he or she. They call him she. Actually, she is responsible for building multiple hospitals, orphanages. Um, they, they have the largest, um, most the largest, most sustainable and green like property in all of the different uh, re like retreats in India. Mm -hmm. So like this, like like they recycle the water and all, all this stuff. And also a huge, massive golden temple, a Lakshmi temple that's like over $60 million that was donated. This temple's on, it's, it's, it's hard for me to explain. There's this big, huge like star path that's 1.2 kilometers around that people can walk. And it's uh, in the middle of it is this huge golden Lakshmi temple that you can go and sit and pray under and, and do arati and, and puja under. It's just incredible. The place is incredible. Mm. When you're there, you feel the energy. It, they're some of the most kind, loving, amazing humans I've ever met. I'm sure. The the level of service that's there and, and, and of love and like spirituality is off the, you can't help but have these like divine awakening experiences. So that's the context. We're at this place, we're at this retreat center and we're, there's all these beautiful temples and I'm in the presence of this being. And at first she's on stage doing daily arati, this prayer with flowers and, and turmeric and milk and fire and all this stuff. 
And I'm watching and this music is loud and chaotic and everyone's just sitting there watching. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. But I'm not having any experience. I'm not, I'm like, this is cool, but I've done a lot of cool shit in my life. Like right. I'm, you know, I've done some pretty cool shit. So I'm like, this is cool. Clearly an amazing being for all of this to kind of, you know, grow up around right, her, right? right? right. In, in just a matter of 14 years, all this to happen because of this person. And I can feel, seems to like be a really loving being. This is great. And then at the end, you get to go up and like give her flowers and kind of like be present with her and she'll do like a little blessing on you. And then, you, you know, you go sit back down. That was amazing. But it wasn't until uh, like day four where we get to go to her house. And it's like a two-story natural like ranch, like just a base, like a real basic house. And her mother is there. The mother of like the child, Got of the actual kid yep. is there. And we, we go upstairs to have a similar ceremony to have RT in prayer. And upstairs is a cement flat uh, like floor and just a thatch leaf roof. And outside is the cows and the cattle, which are very sacred, you know, to to her and yeah. the people there. And she's doing this ceremony. Okay, so I'm going to share two real quick stories here. She's doing this ceremony, and she's like d the flowers, and then the milk, and then pouring the the the, the turmeric, and pouring the coconut, you know, water, and and doing the prayer. And then she would reach over here, and her assistant had everything, like every like. She's sitting so upright and so still on this concrete floor. There isn't a single extra movement, not a single extra. I mean, it's like, like a fucking animated robot. <laughs> Everything is perfect. The, every once in a while, she'll look over at us and there's just 10 of us, like 10 to 12 of us on the roof of this house watching this thing happen yeah, yeah and she's just doing this for like an hour straight every movement and we we went there three days in a row and i swear you could put like the film over all three days and it would look like the same exactly single the same moment thing. wow and i'm like there is something beyond human happening here and when you're sitting there watching this uh there's so much shakti energy, so much feminine, like just yeah. powerful energy. You start like leaving your body. Like people are just like nodding off and it's, it's, and so you're almost in a <laughs> trance. I gotta go. The energy is so intense. You're just like, you're trying to be present and you're just being blasted out of your frigging body. Right, right. It's one of the, that was when at that moment I was like, I get it now. Yeah. Now I get it. Yeah, yeah. This is not just a normal being I'm in the presence of. I can feel, can feel the it. level of consciousness and the level of love and what like the, the ceremony this person's doing and how they're literally doing it for the for the balance of the fucking planet. Planet. Yeah. Right. That that's the that's, level of that's intention. Powerful. That's powerful. And you can sense it. And so that that was when I was like. I get it now. I'm on board. Thank you, Ama. I love you. And then it was the final day. We weren't sure if we we're going to go back to her house. And it was just our group that was called back. Literally just six of us. The six that my friend Brahman Carey took us on. And again, she's been working with her for years and is a very, very close devotee of Ama. So we got called back last minute, literally like a couple hours before we're supposed to get in a shuttle to drive back to, you know, catch the plane. And so um, we cut, we get to sit, just the six of us at her feet, literally at her feet, and just ask whatever we want whatever we want. And so we're just, questions are happening popcorn style. And of course, every every question is, the, when you know you're in the, the, the power of a true teacher, the answers are so simple. You think they're gonna be like this, in this profound, but they're profound because they can say five words and capture the entire essence. And they normally make you go back into you. A hundred percent. Because the answer is, hundred percent right yeah hundred percent you usually that's what it, jesus did yeah so it's usually a question or a statement that uh, makes yep. you go deeper or a parable or yeah. A, like a yeah, yeah it's yeah. something so simple and you think it just can't be that easy yep. you want to like your human mind you want to complicate it more, it more. Yeah. yeah wants to make it fancy and more special yeah and um so that was a big part of it so then it, we're now we're wrapping up and ama looks at my partner and tells her to come here come here and so my partner goes over and like sits like inches from her and she says, put out, put out your hand. And so she puts out her hand and Amma starts, and we had, we had been hearing stories all week from a devotee that's been going to her since he was 15 years old. 
So for 14 years, he's been going from Canada to this retreat center with his family. And I, I wish I could, I wish I had time to tell you the story of how he met Amma and what, okay. what happened. But all I can tell you is that he would tell stories about Amma making the palm of her hand disappear. And then a deity, like a, 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 a Ganesh, a silver Ganesh would appear in the middle of her hand. She would take it out, give it to the person in her hand would go back to normal. When, when, Enlightened masters and deities are first building their following and they're st starting to learn to play with true magic and alchemy of, of planet and learning how to create in like how creation is created. Mm -hmm. They're known to do a ton of these things, very similar to Jesus walking on water, right? right? They're known to do these things both because they're practicing, but also because they're, you know, it, 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 Tongue in cheek, I say proving that they're that they're really real doing deal. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of both, but they're doing it from such a, a, a high level of consciousness and innocence. It's not like I'm look at me, I'm special if they're doing it from pure mm -hmm. love. So we had heard these stories all week long from multiple people over and over who had saw these experiences with their own eyes and had lived these experiences firsthand. Mm. And it's one thing to hear it. It's a whole nother thing to see it. So we're getting ready to leave. He calls her over, tells her to put out her hand, and he just starts chanting and doing this thing like this over her hand. And he's squeezing this hand, and we're inches, like, I mean, centimeters. We're looking at, everyone's looking, and all of a sudden, boom, he drops this medallion. And on one side is the Sri Yantra, and on the other side, it's a Ganesh. Mm -hmm. And he says, here, you, you, you have this now. You carry this with you on a necklace. And I'm going to give you a mantra that I want you to say because she asked for like support on something. Wow. And so he literally materialized this pendant out of nothing, thin air. And when you see it happening, like a thing materialize in your front of your face. And then, yeah. And then she wore that for years until she put it on her altar one day and it disappeared. Yeah. And so he explained to us how he did that. Like there, there's three ways. It's either you're taking the, the, the blood of someone and using it as like an element to create material or you're materializing, um, uh, something, uh, I can't remember what the third way was, but it was either you're transporting something from a place or you're using like some kind of, uh, element like water or blood to, to turn it into a different material, alchemize it. Yeah. And then there was a third way where he kind of explained how you know, he creates, you know, stuff. Daniel Raphael, right? Mm -hmm. Very he, much, he's yeah. told me similar stories. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, we're, 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 uh, it was maybe the same one. Her and him and Marcy, my former partner, they're close friends and Got we're it. all close friends. Got so, it. Got it. Yeah. 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 By the way, that's a, a good, Guest for the show. Yeah. Daniel Raphael. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And Marcy, you, if you want females. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's not local, but um, sometimes she comes through Austin. Or I'll, so whatever. I have to connect awesome. you. Yeah. Yeah, man. But yeah, it, it was, that was, you know, I had that first experience of having like this kind of like awakening and this being blasted like, out of my body. And yeah. then the very next day to watch that happen, to watch somebody like I love it. materialize something out of. Out, out of, of nothing. Out of nothing. Yeah. I love and it, man. Give it as a gift. It was incredible. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Final thoughts. Final thing you want to share. Uh, man, I don't know. This is great. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Just have fun with life. Don't take shit so seriously. Even yeah. the awakening. Yeah. You know, it's why they say it's it's enlightening. Yeah. You know, enlighten the fuck up people because, yeah. you know, it's, it's a ride. Um, so I just want to encourage everyone, if you're going through a dark night of the soul, I get it. There is a light at the other side, I promise you. And in fact, the thing that you're experiencing is happening for your absolute greatest and the highest good, period, the end. That's right. And if you're going through a, something good and great, enjoy it. Enjoy Celebrate it. it. Yeah. Actually enjoy it and be present to it. And uh, that's it. That's it. Awesome. How yeah. do they get a hold of you? Yeah. Um, Instagram is probably the easiest. Uh, I've got my, uh, my, my link in my bio there. It's a link tree link. Okay. So because of, you know, the, with link tree of all the links in one place. So just the easiest thing I'm, I'm updating my website. So, um, if they go to IG Dallas, Michael Sear at IG Dallas underscore Michael underscore Sear, Dallas, Michael Sear. S here is C Y R. C Y R. Yeah. Got it. Dallas, Michael Sear, C Y R. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's really it. I mean, my, my bio is there and the link is there and that's the easiest. You know, Beautiful. if you want to know more about me. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Man. Ah, pleasure. It was a man. great conversation. I appreciate you. Thank yeah, you, great brother. Great conversation. Yeah, love it. And that's a wrap, guys, for this week's episode of The Higher Self. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, 
uh, do the star, the rating, whatever you know you're supposed to do. Thumbs up. Uh, yeah, give it a thumbs up <laughs> and uh, and share it because as you can tell, we're having conversations that aren't really had. Yeah. We get deep and we touch all different aspects of life. And um, I I want to encourage you that you may have heard some things in this episode that made you think, what is going on here? <laughs> Just keep going on the journey and you'll see. You'll eventually see for yourself that what was shared here was uh, was absolute truth. Yeah. So until next week, we'll see you then. Hey, friends, thanks for watching this week's episode of The Higher Self. I want to invite you to go to dannymorell.com to get inside access to all of our programs and our upcoming events. And I look forward to seeing you live in person at one of our next events.